Amen. Well, I wanted to speak to you today, ladies and gentlemen, about the name of this sermon called When He Speaks, Are You Listening? And I thought that this would be appropriate today because for the last couple of weeks, as you know, we've been speaking about the Word and the Word of God and, and uh, what that all meant and who Jesus is, that He is actually the spoken Word of God made flesh. But as we sit there, we think about the spoken Word of God. The spoken Word, the written Word, whichever way the Word of God comes to you, you have to be listening if you're going to get it. Amen. Amen. Do you understand? If you're not listening, you're going to just keep on walking by. You're just going to walk right on by. So the uh, focus statement today is communication with God is always two-way. Always two-way. And our function statement of the day is that we need to listen intently for the voice of God. Amen? Amen. So have you ever heard your name called and didn't know where it came from? Yeah. yeah I remember back in the day I'd be walking the streets in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> so you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Walking the streets in the middle of the night. All of a sudden, I could swear I heard my name. And I turned around to look, man, and all I saw was little shadows jumping behind the poles. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe you even wondered if it was your name at all. You know, you'd be questioning stuff. Have you ever heard your name called and you thought that it came from somebody else? Just to find out that it wasn't them at all? You look at somebody like, did you call my name? Did you call my name? And it's it starting to get all up in the face. Man, I don't even know you, man. Get all the <laughs> So we got all mixed up. The voice just seemed to come from somebody else. Listening for your name from one of your close friends is one thing. But listening for the voice of God is quite another. I want to ask you another question. Now, I want you to think about this before you answer it, even to yourself. Because I'm not talking about a feeling, okay, but an actual voice. And I also want you to think about what he might be saying to you. If you did hear his voice, he has to be saying something because God never uses words unintentionally. Amen? He always has something to say. So you need to ask yourself, what kind of effect would it have on you? Was he warning you because you were in danger? Anybody have that happen to you before when you was in danger? And just for some reason, it might have been, not even been a voice. It might have just been a feeling. I remember back in the day, I used to live in Laguna, Laguna Beach. And I was back in my drug days and stuff. So I had an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment in Laguna Beach. And I had lots of people to come over to the house. Next thing I know, my house got taken over by the drug, by the dope man. And he decided to give a big old party, man. He had parties going on here and there. And I said to myself, man. And I had this overwhelming feeling to get out of there. And so I packed up all my stuff, man, and back in my car and threw my stuff in there. Didn't even tell nobody I was leaving. Moved out. And that night, SWAT came down on the apartment. I mean, you know, everybody in there got arrested. And they thought that I snitched. I, said, I didn't snitch on you. I said, just something told me to get out of here, man. I just had to get out. But uh, you know, I thought that was uh, that was going to pull me out of here. So he was trying to communicate to me, okay? And uh, that was the way that he decided to let me hear from him. Sometimes he uses other people to talk to us. Yeah. Because we may not be in the right frame of mind to hear from him. And that's happened to me a whole lot of times. God used it. He used my life to let me know what was going on. But I'll tell you, one time I was walking down the street, back in the drug days, and I, and I was out looking for some dope. I'm walking on street with some dope. And I was getting ready to walk by this church, and this lady was standing out in front of the church. She was crazy God. I looked at her and I thought, hmm, she's having a good time. <laughs> and all of a sudden she stopped and she started looking at me. <laughs> and I, and I went, so 
thought they were going to walk on by. And when I got close to her, she went, the Lord's got a word for you. I thought, well, okay, what's he got to say? He says, come on in here. Trying to bring me in the church. I said, no, 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 I'm looking for a bag of dope. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to get high. She said, no, 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 forget that. Come on in here. This is even better for you. Come on in the church. You know, I wouldn't listen to him. He was trying to use somebody else's voice. Yeah. He tried to let me know what he wanted to say to me, what he wanted to do, but I wasn't listening. I wasn't going to my business. I just wasn't ready. You know, he, he was trying to let me know that he was after me. And it was wonderful when I started thinking. I think about it now, it's like, man, I see how God was after me back then. But like I said, he uses my life quite a bit to get my attention. And it's funny, because when he does, he does something to her because she loses all expression in her face. I'm sitting around, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and God begins to work through her. And all of a sudden, she'd be like this, well, honey, you know, and then all of a sudden her face goes, ah. And she looks at me, and she speaks what, she, what the Lord has put on her heart. Let me tell you something. If I don't listen, at least to what she's got to say, I don't let her tell me exactly what, what, uh, what decisions to make, but sometimes she brings a whole lot of things to my attention that I've missed. And so she'll do that. She'll bring it to my attention. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I need to consider that. You know, any, and I'm going to tell you men out there right now, if you got a woman out there and you're telling her stuff like, I'm a man, don't be telling me. I got this. Let me tell you something. Don't be no fool. Don't be no fool. That woman that you got on your arm, she on your arm for a reason. Not just because she's pretty. She got a mind on her too. She can think. And then you know that. Don't think you gotta go falling behind and doing everything that she's saying. But listen to what she's got to say. Because my wife come up with all kinds of ideas that are better than mine. You know? And so when she does that, I consider those and I say, okay, let me, uh, let me go ahead and make a decision. The kind of decision that I need to make. Amen? Amen. Also, on top of that, you know, sometimes we mess up and we say something to her that's mean. We get angry. We, in a, we, in a, uh, we got an attitude. Or something like that, we're walking around and uh, she says something to us. <laughs> and we snap at her. Yep. Snap right at her. And you know something? That's when God really speaks to me. Because yeah, right. what he does, he immediately starts getting on my case. He says something like, Tony, you know that. Get in there and say you're sorry. Right. Now let me tell you something. When you hear the word of God, even if it's just a feeling in your heart, I know, but you can tell us him talking to you because it's different from yourself. Man, you better get in there and tell that girl you're sorry. Because man, I'll tell you, when I don't do that, when I, it's better to be obedient. Amen, it's better to be obedient. And he understands, we make mistakes, we snap, we do these things, but you know what? You don't have to say that. Get in there and apologize to your girl. Amen? Hearing the word of the Lord is a wonderful thing to experience for those of you who have. And give me a show of hands. How many people have heard of the word of the Lord? Amen. That's good. You know what that tells me? That tells me that God has got a room full of his children in here that are attentive to what he's got to say. Amen. That's wonderful. So when God, when God cares enough, that he is willing to open his mouth and speak directly to you. That's an awesome thing. And let me tell you something. There's people that, there's, most of us in here, we've heard the Lord speak to us because of what the Word of God said, or maybe somebody said something to you. Or maybe you just had an overwhelming feeling come over you. But there might be some of you out there, and I can tell you this for the fact, it happened to me. That he opened his mouth and spoke audibly to me. Said something to me. And you know something when God, and I mean, I could hear him just as clear as if you were to open your mouth and say something to me right now, I could hear him. Yeah. It was an amazing thing, and I thought to myself, wow, God spoke to me. And so, you know, that's a, 
Yeah, sometimes we need to be attentive to be listening for it too. Do you know something? Your life plan. You can be life straight now. God will want more life to be to you. Amen? Amen. Yeah. But let me tell you something. When God speaks to you, when He especially, if He opens up His mouth and He audibly speaks to you, it comes with a great responsibility. Yeah. You better be listening. And you better not only listen to what He has to say, but the next thing that you need to do is be completely, 100% obedient. Yeah. And then you need to obey His Word. That's right. Now, where in the Bible would we hear of someone that was going through this very phenomenon? Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel 3, and we're going to read 1 through 18. And let's stand for the reading of the Word of God. God says, it says, Now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli. And word from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were in the And it happened at that time, as Eli was lying down in the place, in his place, now his eyesight had begun to grow dim, and he could not see well. And the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of, of God was. That the Lord called Samuel and he said, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call him. Lie down again. So he went and he laid down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose, and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord yet been revealed to him. So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he rose, and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And then Eli discerned that the Lord was calling the blood. And Eli said to Samuel, Go I now, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and he lay down in his place. And then the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. And in that day I will carry out against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from the beginning to the end. For I have told him that I am about to judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knew because his sons brought a curse on themselves and he did not rebuke them. Therefore, I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So Samuel lay down until morning, and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. But Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. And then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. And he said, What is the word? that he spoke to you. And please do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also if you hide anything from me of all the words that he spoke to you. And so Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Let's be still. That's a difficult thing to do. When judgment is being passed because you have messed up, how many of us could sit there and say, you know what, it is the Lord let him do to me what he feels that he should do. Man, let me tell you something. I might be hitting my knees going, please don't, don't, please don't do it, please. I don't want that. Don't, don't, just forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. I'll change up. I'll change up. You know, but Eli, he was like, I gotta give it to Eli. Let him do what he wants to do. Eli, I'm not really impressed with Eli. So as we can see in this passage, God wanted to establish a line of communication with Samuel because he was teaching Samuel how to respond to him. 
We all need to understand this, ladies and gentlemen. When God is speaking to you, you need to learn how to respond to the Word of God when He speaks to you. Whether it be through Scripture, whether it be through the written Word, whether it be through spoken Word, no matter what, whether you bring somebody else into your life, you need to understand, be able to recognize it, of who it is, and then act upon it. Amen? Because God had plans for Samuel, and He was going to make him into a great man of God. But if there is one thing that you can believe is that if you are going to be a great man of God, you are going to have to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord and make sure that you obey. So, what intricate details do you think God was trying to teach Samuel at this right young age? Well, first of all, we need to remember that the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was a, a, a period of time I think it was about 400 years. Nobody heard from the Lord. He just wasn't speaking to man. He wasn't doing anything. There were no visions. There was nothing like that. People were just having to go to the Word of God, and that's how they would, would get any kind of information. It was just from the written Word. It was infrequent, so people were not used to hearing from it. So it might be, um, it might be easy to ignore it or make a mistake, on how to respond to God's voice. But fortunately, in this case, Samuel had Eli, who was up in years, and he recognized what was happening to Samuel, and he told him what to do the next time that he heard his name called. So God was teaching Samuel many things. Now, one of the things that we need to really, really be careful of, not every voice you hear is from God. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you might be speaking to one another, and that's cool. You know who that's from. You know? Yeah, it's also speaking to me. But let me tell you something. Sometimes you hear a voice, and ain't nobody there. That's not necessarily God. Right. If you don't believe me, you can walk outside here right now. There's brothers walking down the street. <laughs> and you look over, and ain't nobody there. But they're talking, man. Something's talking to them. He's having a conversation. You need to understand something's going on. So we need to be able to recognize the word, the word of the Lord. We need to recognize who's talking to us. Now, what does the Bible say about that? The Bible says that you need to test every spirit. I used to ask myself, well, how do you test every spirit? Well, let me tell you something. I started to figure, I figured out that if, if the Lord is talking to you, if it's somebody from God, then you need to ask that spirit a question. Because you can ask that spirit, whatever's talking to you, you can ask him a question. Because if you listen intently, you can hear them say stuff to you. So I used to ask them, if I wanted to know if it was definitely from God, I'd ask them, I said, tell me that Jesus is Lord. Because let me tell you something, if it's any other voice, if it's any demon, if it's Satan, or whatever it is, they cannot say that. They will not admit to you that Jesus is Lord. Test every spirit. Amen? Amen. You'll be able to clear that up real quick. Now these things that Samuel was being taught, first of all, first one is that he was being taught how to recognize the voice of the Lord. Okay, this was the first time that Samuel had heard God's voice. So here it is, Samuel's laying in there. He's just kicking it. <laughs> and Jesus, I mean, God says to him, he says, Samuel! Samuel didn't understand. He had never heard from the Lord, right? So he needed to learn how to hear from the Lord. And so that's one of the things that Eli had to do, was to tell him, okay, the next time you hear it, you know, he needed to learn how to discern. To discern it. And just like that, you all need to learn how to discern the voice of the Lord. Second thing that he was teaching was how to respond to God's call. When God calls you, how do you respond? Eli told him, he says, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. We should be doing the same thing. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Once you determine that it is God's voice, once you determine that it is from God, test the spirits. And once you know that you're okay, then tell us, Lord, what do, you want? what do you want me to do? I'm here, I'm your servant. Do whatever you want. Because let me tell you something. If he's your Lord, there's no such thing as him. Well, no, Lord. If he's really your God, the only answer that you can legitimately have for him is, yes, Lord, your servant is listening. Amen? Amen. The third thing was that the importance of the message was that he was, what, uh, what was the, the importance of the message that he was to deliver? Let me tell you something. 
When God comes and He has something for you to do, the message, how important it is, and He wants you to deliver it. And it's somebody to somebody, somebody in your family, somebody, a friend, whatever the case may be. If He's got a message for you, what is it that you should do? Do it immediately. Obedience immediately. Now, if you've heard any kind of message like that, I remember one time I was sitting there, uh, this is back in the days when I used to go hang out at this place uh, uh, called the uh, Irish Heart. That's so why I used to go in there and have a cold one every now and then. By the way, I'll straighten that out. So. <laughs> but anyway, I'd be sitting there, and this lady, who's a girlfriend of one of my best friends, she came walking in, she came walking down towards me, and all of a sudden I hear the, I hear the voice of God, or the Holy Spirit speaking to me. You know what he said to me? He says, Tony, she's sleeping with so-and-so. Wow. She's sleeping with so-and-so. Other than her boyfriend or her husband. And I, and I was like, well, what do you want me to do with this? <laughs> and I said, well, I, you know, I, she came and sat down and talked to me. And I just said, about a month, month and a half later, here she come again. She came to sit, came to sit, came down and sat next to me. Holy Spirit's go through me again. Tell me, she's sleeping with some stuff. Now I'm, I'm like looking around. I didn't think nothing again. A couple of months went by again. Here she comes the third time. Tell me, she's sleeping with some stuff. He wouldn't give me anything else to say. I think he wanted to see what I was going to do with this information. She comes in, she sits down next to me, and she starts talking to me again. And I, I looked at her and I said, I won't give you no names. <laughs> so and so. You know I'm a Christian. She says, Yes. And I said, You know, when you're a Christian and you believe in God, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit will come and reveal things to you. And the reason why he was revealing this to me is because this person that she was sleeping with, he had accepted the Lord when I left the Lord not long before that. So he belonged to Jesus, and Jesus wanted to get him straight, not to let him know that he knew what he was doing. So she says, yeah, I know that he reveals that. I said, well, he has something to say to you. And she goes, what's that? I said, he told me to let you know that you're sleeping with so-and-so. And she went, and I was like, she goes, that's why I hate you, Christian. <laughs> and I told her, I said, you know what? I said, I said, he's my best friend. I said, you're going to hurt him. And you're not only going to hurt him, you're going to hurt everybody that's involved with this. Because I'm not going to go running behind you and tell him about you, but I'm telling you, you need to stop this. And she did. So, Depending upon that message that God has given you, it's very, very important for you to follow through. <clears throat> also, number four, he was also teaching um, Samuel about responsibility. To repeat all of the God had, that God had said. Let me tell you something. When God comes to you and he tells you something and he wants you to say something to somebody else, do not add anything to it and do not take anything away from it. Amen. Amen. Make sure you have a responsibility. You do not want to step out there and represent God by adding to or taking away anything that He said to you. Amen. Who did that? Moses did that. Moses messed up with that. You know, God told Moses after Moses the first time he struck the rock and the water came out and all that stuff. And then the second time, God had told him, he says, just don't speak to the rock. But Moses decided to misrepresent God, and he went in and he spoke to the rock and hit him with the stick again. <laughs> misrepresented him. And what did he do? He caused Moses not to be able to enter the promised land. Because he misrepresented God. Amen? So if God talks to you, you make sure that if it's something that you need to say, you make sure you don't add nothing to it or take anything away. The fifth thing was that he told Eli not to be, I mean, I mean not Eli, I'm sorry, Samuel was not, was to be taught not to be afraid because when God speaks to you many times, it's not a pleasant thing. God brings a lot of things to our mind and he speaks to us to be able to talk and deliver a message. But if that message does not please everybody, don't be afraid. You know, because you're doing what God wants you to do. Speak out. Be bold. 
He tells you to be bold and tell people what it is that he wants you to deliver, what message he wants you to deliver. Because that happened with John the Baptist, didn't it? John the Baptist was speaking out to King Herod and says, you cannot have your brother's wife. And what happened? John the Baptist got thrown in jail and he eventually got his head cut off. But you know what? He stood strong for God and he delivered the message. Sixth thing was that Eli learned what God had planned for him through that message. And he knew it was the Lord. He said, let him do what seems good to him. So Samuel delivered the message. He was not afraid. He did what he was supposed to do. Eli got the message and knew what was going to happen to him. And the judgment came upon Eli's house. And it's something that we all need to learn, too, about discipline. Eli got in trouble because he did not discipline his children correctly. He did not stop his sons from bringing a curse upon themselves. They were having sex with the women that were coming to the temple, even though they were supposed to be there representing, representing God as his high priest and stuff, and his priests in the temple, but he was messing up. So Eli did not discipline them the way that they should have been disciplined. That brought judgment upon Eli's house. So I don't know about you, but make sure that you discipline your kids if they're still with you. And if you got to talk to them about something, make sure that you do. Amen? Amen. So, before we go any further, how does God look at things when we sin? How does He see His people when they go astray to serve other gods? Bro, well, He sees it like a husband sees an adulterous wife. God looks at Israel like He would look at a wife. He, he loves them and, he, and He's a jealous God. He doesn't want to share them with anyone. He's their provider, their comforter. And he is faithful to them, even when they're not faithful to him. And he expects the same from them. Now with that in mind, let's look at the prophet Hosea. Now Hosea, being a prophet, and we got lots of folks that run around down here and just get really claim to be prophets. I want to say something. If you're a prophet, you're in a dangerous place. And you better take your, your appointment. If you think that that's your gift and that's what God is doing, you better take it seriously. Yeah. Okay, because see what happened to Hosea. God wanted to let them know. He wanted to let the people of Israel know that they are adulterous wives to him. And so he told Hosea to give them a sign. And guess what that sign was? He told Hosea, he said, look, I want you to go down there and get you a wife. A wife that's a prostitute. Hosea said, what? He said, go down there and get you a wife that's a prostitute. And So he went down there, he got a, 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 an adulterous wife, a prostitute wife, and he had children with him. Again, he wanted all of Israel to see what Hosea was doing. Okay, and so he did that with her. Okay, that would be someone who can, who can hear his word. God wanted Israel to know how he felt and what they were doing to him and how they were hurting his feelings and provoking him to anger. It's important, and let me tell you something, I don't know about you, but if you're doing something that's making God angry, don't you want to know what it is? So that you can repent, so that you can step away from it? I don't want to keep doing something that I know God is making, that I'm making him angry. If I'm making God angry, the last thing I need is for him to go, hey, Tony, you ain't listening. <laughs> I don't want that. I love the fact that God speaks to me. When I am messing up, and I'll tell you the truth, when I'm not doing something right, He speaks so kindly to me. He speaks kindly and soft, and I get the message. Amen? Amen. Don't you like that when it happens to you, when He's still soft and, and, and loving to you? Amen. Amen. So, that was what He did. Now, Hosea, the third chapter, the third one, He says, Then the Lord said to me, Go again, love a woman who has loved her husband. Who has, I'm sorry, who is loved by her husband, yet an adulteress. Even as the Lord loves the sons of Israel, though they turn to other gods, and love raisin cakes. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about a people that are being bribed. They're following faith. They're following faith religions, false religions. They're doing whatever it is that they should be doing, like an adulterous wife. And they're being bribed by things that they want. You know, raisin cakes? I mean, come on now. At least give me a good Danish. <laughs> no, but you know, we don't want to find ourselves in that situation. 
to me. Being bribed. And that happens all the time. You get these false religions out there talking about, come to our church. We serve in the town. Huh? Got our chicken. And we go, this. Now, really, what you don't get bribed like that with a piece of chicken. Come on, man. You know, stay close to your God. Stay close to your God. If you want to be influenced, be influenced by the wonderful word of God when you get to Amen. That spiritual bank of the food. Amen. Yeah. That's right. There was another one named Ezekiel. Ezekiel the prophet. Now Ezekiel, he had one. Let me tell you something. When you become a, when you are a prophet of God, you may be asked to do some terrible, terrible things that are very, very inconvenient. And if you don't believe me, look at what he did with Ezekiel. Ezekiel, his role was messing up, and God told Ezekiel, he said, you know what? You are going to bear the burdens of the iniquities of the sons of Israel. And he said, well, how do you want me to do that? And God says, I want you to go out there, set this whole situation up. He gets on, he's, he gives another one, he says, Ezekiel was told to bear the iniquities of Israel, lie down on his left side, and then the iniquities of Judah, he was to lay down on his right side. When he was supposed to lay down and bear the iniquities of Israel, he was supposed to lay there, wrapped up in ropes for 390 days. Can you imagine if God said to you, I want you to lay down on your left side for 390 days and I'm going to wrap you up in a rope. You can't move. You can't do nothing. Yeah. You are going to bear the iniquities of Central City and many of the church in the Nazarene. Wow. I want to have you do it. Well, I would do it 390 days because in Central City, you got to do it for a thousand days. Y'all are really simple, huh? <laughs> Probably the pastor's fault. <laughs> no, but that's a terrible thing, isn't it? When you're a prophet and God tells you to do something, Ezekiel had to do it. 390 days. And then after that, that was just for Israel. He says, after that, I want you to turn over on the other side and lay there for another 40 days for the iniquities of Judah. So these were things that God told his prophet to do. If you're a prophet, if you think that you're a prophet, you better understand. That ain't no joke. I don't, you know what I mean? Sometimes I hear the voice of the Lord. I hope that doesn't mean that I'm a prophet because I don't want to be a prophet. You know what I mean? I don't want to be a prophet. If God chooses me to be a prophet, I'll be whatever he wants me to be. But I'll tell you what. Just let me be a pastor. <laughs> So we need to understand, many times when you're a prophet, you bring your, your call to bring bad news. And most of all the prophets, as you read through the Word of God, they were always bringing Israel bad news. Amen? Amen. Now also, we can see that when we have a, a, a desire to hear the Word of the Lord audibly, we're asking for a grave responsibility that goes along with it. A responsibility of obedience, no matter what. So what else? Who else did that? Who, who did not want to obey the word of the Lord when it came to him? Now, no, who? Jonah. That's right, Jonah. You remember that? Jonah was, was a prophet. And God told me, he said, look, Jonah, get up. I'm sending you to Nineveh so that you can speak to that mighty city and tell them what's going on to bring them to repentance. Jonah said, go on now. I got some money. I'm going to go get me a ticket. I'm going to go the direction. So Jonah went down to the bus, bus stop. <laughs> Bought his ticket, got on the boat, took off. All of a sudden, the Lord says, oh, you think? Now let me tell you something, if you're a prophet of God and God gives you an order, do you think that you can resist that? That you can say, just say no? You can't just say, uh, Lord, I know that you told me to do that, but, uh, no. No, no, you can't do that. God's word goes on. It's going to come back. Yeah. Completely. So what did you do? He brings in that big old uh, storm and, and he's getting ready to wreck the boat. And Jonah tells him, he says, I know that the storm has come because I'm not following through with what God told me to do. He said, well, what should we do? He says, grab a hold of me and throw me into the sea. And so Jonah is taking it, throw him into the sea. And immediately, man, this is messed up. What could be worse? Here comes a big old fish. What could be worse? Chomp. It swallows Jonah down to his stomach. Jonah gets down to his stomach and he goes, 
this is messed up. Some other guy in there said, hey, Jonathan. No, I'm just kidding. All of a sudden, hey, Jonah, Jonah's not. He's stuck. But you know something? God was good and merciful with Jonah. Because he took the fish. Jonah was in the first submarine. Did you know that? He's sitting there, he's going all the way, he gets over to Nineveh, and he gets that big ship, that, uh, 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 I'm sorry, big fish up on the sand, and has him throw up Jonah. And here's Jonah laying on the beach and all this throw up. That had to be messed up. You know? Plus, you know, he's in there with all digestive juices and stuff that was eating away at Jonah's body and probably made him look really, really pale. <laughs> anyway, he Jonah gets out and he said, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to go do what that guy to do. So he goes and he witnesses to Nineveh and brought the city to repentance. A wonderful, wonderful thing. So we cannot just say no to God when God calls you to do something. You have a responsibility. If you hear the word of God, you need to be obedient. No matter what, because if he calls you to do it, you can't say no. Moses tried to say no when he wanted him to deliver Israel. Uh, can't you get somebody else? I, I, you know. I got a speech at Pentagon. And God told me, he said, no, you're going to do it. I'm going to send Aaron with you to be the tongue of your mom. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Moses didn't want to do it. God told me, he said, you're going to do it. God had a plan for Moses. He had a plan for Israel. And if God comes to you and tells you that he wants you to do something, he's got a plan for you. Yeah. He's got something that he wants you to do. Amen? He wants you to follow through. Get it done. And let me tell you something. When you get to heaven, when it's time, you're going to be blessed like you would believe that you fall through and did what God wanted you to do. Amen? So when we hear the word of the Lord, all the way, we would be crazy to try to ignore it. Just because we may not like what he's saying. Since his word is spoken, that's it. His word cannot come back. It must be accomplished. So if God has chosen you to use you to hear his voice, remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. No matter That's what. Right. Right. Now there was another guy that decided to be disobedient to God too. I'm going to read it to you. It's 1 Kings 19, 9 through 15. Very, very interesting. This is about the prophet Elijah. Then he came there to a cave and he lodged there. Now this is after Elijah had had it out with all the prophets of Baal. The prophets of Baal was in there and they were leading Israel astray. Israel was following the Baals. And so Elijah says, okay, look. And God told him, he says, you go ahead and take care of this. So Elijah brought them all out and he says, we're going to take care of this. And he put, brought all these bulls and oxen and he set them up to be sacrificed and burnt, and burnt offerings. He dug a moat all the way around it and filled the moat up with water. So nobody could get over there. And then Elijah says, we're going to have a contest. You're going to call down your gods. God, you prophets of Baal. I want you to call on your God and have him send fire down and take up all this offering to burn it all up. And he told us, he says, if they do that, he says, if they do that, then Baal is God and you can go ahead and serve him. But if they can't do that, and our God comes and does it, he says, then my God is God and you need to follow him and serve him. So he says, you go first. So here come the prophets of Baal. And there was a gentleman that come down and burn this stuff up and nothing was happening. And so they started cutting themselves. Praise to the Lord. 
and he tells the Lord what he needs to do. And all of a sudden, now I want you to put yourself there. You're out there watching. You're out there watching, and all of a sudden, Elijah prays to your God and my God, and fire comes down out of heaven, man, and burns up all that sacrifice, the bulls, the oxen, all the wood, and then the flames started licking up all the water off the boat for a drink. Calming things down. And then Elijah says, you know what? And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Elijah, man, and Elijah let out one man against 500 prophets and killed them all. Killed all of them. Now, here it is. One man kills 500 prophets. And then Jezebel says, you know what, Elijah? You're going to be the same as them by noon tomorrow, by the same time. You're going to, the same thing's going to happen to you. What did Elijah do? He didn't even get bold. Oh, well, yeah? <laughs> you can't do nothing to me. No, Elijah went, <laughs> and took off running. He ran into the wilderness, all the way down into the wilderness. And so that brings us to a place where he got here. He says, and then he came there to a cave, and he lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And so he said, Go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by. And a great and strong wind was rending, rending the mountains and breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire either. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle blow. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, and he went out and he stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And then he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left. And they seek my life to take it away. The Lord said to him, Go, return on your, on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you have arrived, you shall anoint Isaiah, king of over the Iran. You see what happened? There's something very significant happening. God was speaking to Elijah. And I'd like to suggest to you that when you're looking for God to speak to you, what happens? We might look for his word to come to us in the same way that it came to Elijah. Now, I'm not talking about a mighty wind or an earthquake or even through the fire. But I think that sometimes we think that God is going to make his word known to us in that same huge, miraculous way. I know I used to. I used to sit there and I, I knew God had his hand on me. And he was changing my life and I kept thinking to myself, he needs to come to me and talk to me and impart the, the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> or he needs to come and, 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 and split a mountain in half in front of me. No, 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 no. We, that's not the way it works. We want God to use us, yeah, but we think that it is, has to be the same way that God spoke to his prophets back in the past. This is why it's so important for us to get to know our God, to get to know his personality, to get acquainted with his love and mercy so that we can recognize his voice when he speaks to us genuinely. So he's not going to part a red sea for us when he decides to speak to us. He's not going to come blowing in a mighty wind when he decides to confront us. And he's not going to be in an earthquake where he wouldn't be able to pay, we wouldn't be able to pay attention anyway because of all the shaking. We need to understand that all of the miraculous things that we might expect to happen when God speaks to us audibly have all 
already been happening for us. Think about it. Maybe he hasn't part of the Red Sea for you, but he has removed certain obstacles from your land. And he's made a way for you, hasn't he? He's made a way for you to get through. Maybe he hasn't closed the mouth of a lion from eating you, but he has closed the mouth of drug addiction, alcoholism, and stop that from the mouth. Maybe he hasn't stopped you from being thrown into a fiery furnace of affliction, but he has continued to be there with you, just like he was with Shadrach Meechak. No, Shadrach Meechak. Those three guys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Okay, so he took care of us that way. So it's okay to desire to hear from the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. You can even desire to hear from an audible. But that's not the norm for him. But if you do hear from him audibly, be ready to obey him thoroughly. And if you never get to hear him audibly, that's okay. It's almost just as exciting to hear from him though through the written word or through an anointed writing like the daily bread or even a strong impression on your heart or your mind. And when you are all done with looking for that big, booming, miraculous introduction, Turn your ear and listen for that soft, gentle breeze that carries the beautiful voice of God. Hallelujah.